Welcome to my Secret Place Devotion with Oyix Alfred. The Word of God is alive and equipped to change your life. Good morning. It's great to have you join me today at my Secret Place Devotion. We're going to pray from Psalm 120 verse 1 before we go into the study of the Word. He said, In my distress I cried unto the Lord and He heard me. Are you distressed or concerned about anything? Well, the Bible says that if you will cry out to the Lord this morning, he will hear you. And if he hears you, he will answer. And so let's pray. Thank you, dear Lord, for your promise in the word. You said, Lord, that if we call upon you in the time of trouble, you will hear us. And thank you, my father. Lord, I ask for everyone that is distressed or going through any kind of challenge. I ask that you hear them, Lord. I ask that you respond, O God. In the name of Jesus, amen. You are not truly saved until your spirit, your soul, and your body is saved. For many people, it is only their spirits that are saved. Meaning that you have at some point recognized that you've sinned against God and now you want Jesus to be the one in charge of your life and you have confess your sin and ask Jesus to come and take charge of your life. When you have done that, what happens is that your spirit man is the one that made that move to go with God and Jesus in the person of the Holy Spirit comes and lives in your heart. If you've done that, it is only one part of salvation you have experienced and that is salvation of your spirit. You still have what is called partial salvation. And that change that occurs in your life is not visible to the world. It is only an internal change that has taken place. It is only an internal, you know, transformation that has taken place. Your neighbor will not notice that something has happened to you. You know on your inside that a change has occurred. And if you voice out the change that has occurred, maybe you come home and you say, oh, guess what, everyone? I'm now saved. I'm now born again. Immediately you voice it out. People immediately start expecting certain lifestyle changes from you. And they may not see it. And you too, it will worry you when you notice you relapse back into the old lifestyle. Because of the second salvation that has not occurred before you get to the stage recorded in first Timothy 4 15 when he's talking about the change being visible on the outside it will take a while it will depend on the salvation of your soul let's look at first Timothy 4 15 NIV says be diligent in these matters give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress if you read the verses before it's be obvious to you that the progress being talked about here is not your financial progress it's He's talking about your spiritual progress. So he said, for people to see your spiritual progress, for them to notice a change, he said, you have to give yourself wholly to certain matters. That's before you now experience the external that is now being transformed. Let's read it from the Living Bible Translation. It says, put these abilities to work. Throw yourself into your task so that everyone may notice your improvement and progress. For you to get to that point where everyone now notices that something has changed in your life, it won't occur until you experience the salvation of the soul. That is why the Bible in 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 23 tells us again, I'm going to read from the Living Bible Transition. He says, may the God of peace himself make you entirely pure and devoted to God. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept strong and blameless until the day when our Lord Jesus Christ comes back. So you see, the three elements must be kept blameless. The three elements must be saved. Your spirit, your soul, and your body. Why is it important for your soul to be saved? Before you understand why it's important for your soul to be saved, you have to understand that your soul contains your emotion, it contains your will, it contains your intellect. You want more to listen to the last edition so that you understand what I've just said because I've taught it a lot during the devotional. But your soul contains your will, your emotion, and your intellect. It is important for these three to be saved. If they are not saved, that's the three, meaning the three components of your soul. If they are not saved, it will draw you away from God. It will lead you astray. So what's happening to many people is that their spirits are saved, but their behavior is still like behavior of the world. And then the 
the world is feeling, oh, you said you are saved, you said you are born again. Why do you still do this? Why do you still do this? Why do you still do that? The reason is because that person's will is not saved. So he still does what he wants to do. That person's mind and intellect is not saved. So primarily he does not think like God. He thinks like the world system. And you know, the thinking pattern of God is directly opposite to the thinking pattern of men. For instance, God thinks opposite. Basically, God's way is if you want to be exalted, then you have to be the servant of all. But this is the way man feels. Man feels if you want to be exalted, then you have to do your best to climb to the top. But God said anyone who will be your master must first serve, must first be the slave. Anyone who will be the greatest must come under. Let's see it from Matthew chapter 20. I'll read verse 25. It says, Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. So here Jesus was saying, now this is the way the world behaves. He said, but you that are meant to be my children, he said, it is not so. He continues by saying, instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the son of man did not come to be served, but he came to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. This doesn't even make any sense to a man. How can you tell me if I want to be the master, I have to serve. If I want to be the head, I have to first become the tail. But you see, that is the way that God thinks. God's thinking pattern is different from a man's thinking pattern. And God's plan is for you to think from the heavenly perspective. Do you know how God says you save your life? Let's cut it from the scripture. See Matthew 16, 25. It says, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. Can you imagine? This just doesn't make any sense to a normal person. But guess what? That is the way the kingdom system works. So typically, God wants your mind saved. That's the only way you can behave like him. You have to think from heaven's perspective. You have to always see things from God's perspective. That is why if your mind is not saved, if your will is not saved, if your emotions are not saved, they will lead your spirit away. They will lead your body away. They will lead your body to do the things that are against God. And at the end of the day, your salvation that you have in the spirit will count for nothing because your mind decides how you think and what you do. Your will is the one that makes decisions and of course your emotions are the ones that makes you feel this way or that way. No wonder Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 9.27 said, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. He's not being disqualified because his spirit is not saved. Paul is saying here, I'll be disqualified because my soul and my body are not saved. If I don't bring them under subjection, if I don't bring them under, if I don't let them do what they should do, then I'm going to lose it. I'm going to, at the end of the day, keep doing things that will disqualify me. Watch what Jesus said in Matthew 26 verse 41. I'm reading from the NLT version of the Bible. He says, keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation because the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Have you seen it there? So your spirit might be willing to serve God. Your spirit might be willing to follow God. But it makes no meaning if your mind and all of those things are not willing to follow God. You have to do something about the mind pattern. You have to do something about the will so that it can now line up with what your spirit is doing. If not, your unsaved mind, your unsaved will will lead you astray, meaning that the salvation you have in your spirit at the end of the day will count for nothing. So tomorrow I'm going to tell you in practical steps, how do you save your soul? Practically speaking, what should you do on a daily basis? But thank you for listening today. God bless you. For other life-changing messages, you can now download the app Rev Oyik Speaks. From Play Store for Android phone users or Apple Store for iOS users. You can also follow us on Instagram, YouTube and Telegram, all on the handle Oyeks Alfred. Yeah.